Hey everyone, in this one I'll show you how to achieve this effect. It looks like a bunch of cylinders of varying sizes and colors. It's actually pretty easy to make, so let's get into it. So here I am in Blender 2.9, uh, and in my scene right now I just have my camera parented to an empty and a light. They're all in their own collection right here, so I'm just going to hide those and have a new collection right here. And in that I'm going to put a plane, and then I'm going to go into edit mode, zoom in here, and we're going to repeat this action a few times. We're just going to subdivide. And basically you want to subdivide this to the size of what your largest cylinder face will be. So, um, you know, if we leave it like this, it could be that like your biggest cylinder is that big, which I find is a little too big. Um, so I'm just going to subdivide it three times. Then you want to uh, press two to go into edge mode right here and right click and edge split. So now each of these, if you hit three to go into face select, each of these is separated like that. And you want to make sure that you do this or else this isn't really going to work right. So next you want to select random up here or you can uh, press F3 to search for it. So you want to select random and then I'm going to right click and subdivide those two. And once you do that you just want to select everything. Once again, two to edge select, right click, edge split. So you basically just want to repeat this until you get pieces that are as small as you want. So I'll repeat this one more time. 3 for face select, select random, right click to subdivide, 2 to go to edge select, select everything, right click, edge split. Then you just repeat that. 3 face select, select random, right click, subdivide, select everything, 2 to edge select, right click, edge split. Alright, so now that we have this and all of the edges are split also, um, you can go tab back into object mode right here, and then the rest is going to be some modifiers. So right here we're just going to add a bevel, change that to vertices. You can see all of these right now have like the same uh, bevel length right here. We don't want that. We want it to be different depending on how big the circle is going to be. So instead of offset you can do percentage and change this to 50. And now you can see we have just like a bunch of diamonds and what you need to do is turn the segments up right here and it will start to look more round. So I'm just going to turn this up to about 10. You can turn it up as high as you want. Next, I am going to add a solidify. And you can make this pretty big because we are going to displace this eventually, move them up and down. So you want to give yourself enough space to work with. I'm going to right click Shade Smooth. You can see it gets a little funky right here. Go over right here to Object Data Properties. Go under Normals and Auto Smooth. And we'll get that sharp edge. But you can see we have kind of like a seam on the edge right there. And that's because we have um, multiple vertices on top of each other. And under here, you can just add a weld modifier. And I like to put that right after the bevel because that's what's causing it. And that should uh, fix that issue right there. If you want the edges to be more smooth, you can add another bevel modifier. And then you would just want to change this to uh, limit method to angle. And that should make it so it's only affecting this edge right here. Just to make this a little faster, I'm going to leave that one off. So now this is what we have. What I like to do is I'm just going to duplicate this before I go any further. That way if we don't like something we can go back to it. So I'm going to duplicate that and hide this first one. And if you don't have these icons right here, you can go up this to this filter button and just choose the ones that you want. So now we're going to uh, click on our plane, tab into edit mode. I'm going to select everything and then press P to separate and by loose parts. So this will separate all of those squares into their own pieces right there. And then I'm going to tab back into object mode. And with all of those still selected, I'm going to hit F3 to search. And then uh, I'm going to type in random and look for randomized transform. And then I'm going to adjust just the Z location right here. You can just move that about as much as you want. Before doing that, I like to set my camera up. So I'm just going to go over to the camera, hit zero to look through it, select our camera, and I'm going to set the focal length to something a little higher, like 100. This will make it look a little closer to orthographic, but it still has perspective. So I'm just going to set this up now. You can set it up about whatever way you want. I'm just going to move this on the x-axis right there to look from the top a little more. So this is the angle we have right now. Uh, with all of these still in the collection, you can just click the collection, right click, select objects right there, and I'm going to randomize transform again. Move those up as much as you want. I find uh, I kind of like it to be subtle, but if you want it to be crazy like that, you totally can. It's still a cool effect.
I'm just going to set it about that much, 0 0.026 meters is what I have. And now we can go into uh, shading. So right now all of these are still uh, selected. What you want to do is select one of them or uh, make one of them active, the active selection with control click. Do it over in the outliner right here, control click. So now that one is selected, we get the option to create a new material. And I wanna link all these materials so they have the same one. So I'm gonna hit control L right here and I'm going to choose materials or you can just hit M. So now all of these have the same material and if we change the color, all of them will change. But I want them to be different. So I'm going to choose the object info node right here and we can use this uh, random color right here to make them a random color. You can also use this to change the metallic value and the transmission value and other things like that. So for that, I like to choose a math node right here and change this to greater than. So when you plug this into metallic, um, the white values are going to be metal and the black are going to be not metal. So we can view that right here. Just look through your camera and choose however much you want really. So I'm just gonna add a little like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing for transmission. And in this case, if something is metal, it won't be uh, see-through. So it pretty much just overwrites it. So we can turn this down a little, make it so some of these are see-through also. They'll kind of look like glass. And I find that uh, it gives a cool effect to this if you also add a uh, Let's see, I'll select that one right there and then right click to select all of the objects. You can see that one is still active right here. You can add another solidify. Let's see, solidify. I'm just going to go into x ray mode right here. You can see that it has this like hull right there. So it's, um, it's, it doesn't look like it's solid anymore. It looks like it is hollow. So you can make that about as thick as you want, but remember, you don't want it to be too thick because we have some pretty small cylinders in here. So I'm gonna go back into solid mode and with everything still selected, I want to control L and link all the modifiers. So all of those will be hollow now. And you can't really tell if it's an EV right here, but when you go into cycles, let me save this real quick. When you go into cycles, you'll see that it will be looking a little hollow. Just turn the roughness down so it will be a little more apparent. You can see that it looks kind of like um, hollow glass or hollow plastic or something like that. So yeah, if you're using Eevee, you might want to skip that step because it's not really, you're not really going to be able to tell anyway because Eevee handles glass a little differently. And for lighting right now, I'm just using an HDRI. You can download whatever you want or um, just set up some lights. Um, I got mine from HDRI Haven and I'm just going to turn this up a little higher to something like maybe like three. And also, if you want to give these random color also, I like to just choose a color ramp, plug that in here, and then plug the color into the color of your principled BSDF. And you can just select uh, however many colors you want. So I'm just going to choose like uh, red and blue for the other one. And then we get this uh, kind of like mixture of red and blue. And I want to throw some white in there also, so I'm going to add a third one and just turn the saturation all the way down so we have white. There you go, so now we have some random colors in there too. You can mess with the roughness, make it however rough you want. I find that keeping it around like 0.1 or 0.2 makes the metal and the glass look pretty good. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Then you can just um, you know choose your render settings. Uh, I like to turn open image denoising on right here for render. So then when you go to render it, It'll, uh, it'll denoise it for you. You don't have to set up any nodes in Compositor or anything like that. So yeah, that's it. If you'd like to suggest a video, leave a comment below. And don't forget to check out my Gumroad for some products and free wallpapers. Thanks for watching. See ya.